different players, different regions, and different games. It really encapsulates the FGC, just as these two are going to encapsulate the spirit of New York Smash. PK Chris and Tilde stepping up to the plate for loser semis. Loser goes home. Oh yeah, and Tilde immediately is setting up that platform tech chase. Now I've got to say, this is a tale of two advantage states. When Ness has Falco in a Ness combo, it is definitely Falco, especially when it comes to ledge trapping. When it comes to juggling floaties, Falco is just about the best in the business. So it depends who's going to get that first opening. PK Chris went for a bit of a cheeky back throw. Um, when a Ness does that at low percent, they're up to no good. <laughs> Could you ever say that Ness is up to any like good yeah, he's thing? A good kid. Keep alone. Okay. okay. Fair, okay. He's saving right. the world. <laughs> he is. He is a hero for the for the world of Earthbound, and he may be a hero for uh, nest players all around the world trying to figure out how to play through in, in a matchup like this. Falco has so many good air to airs and so many good ledge options in order to close out your stock so quickly. But PK Chris finds an air in order to reset to at least something resembling neutral. Got to play out of this corner though. Oh, yeah. Okay. Getting that parry though, but uh, Tilde is still just able to back off in time. Okay, he's going out there for the wall jump. I was smelling a side wheel, smelling maybe like a four liter, but now he's going to be having PK Chris off stage yet again, able to get that down tilt two frame, recycling that situation. He still has no double jump, and uh, till day you see him not committing. PK Chris went for the beefy PK Thunder over the ledge. Oh. Wait, the PK fire stopped his momentum. It, he clipped it on it and uh, just fell straight down. Yeah, he got reflected. He ate the PK Thunder tail. He ate the head. And then because the PK fire wasn't in the same hit lag sequence, it canceled all of that momentum and just was like, oh, damn, I right. just eat a multi hit. I'm upset. <laughs> It so, looked funny. It did look funny. And you know what? That's what we're here for. We're here for the comedy jokes, and we're here to see just how, P honestly, how PK Chris can get off the ledge. The answer is he's not. The answer is he's not. <laughs> That's quintessential feeling. This is every this is like worst nightmare. Are they going to go off stage? Are they going to reflect this? Are they going to absorb this? The answer is yes, on occasion, Tilde has made this a 3 to 1 stock lead. He comes on high, he avoids the ledge. Chris is struggling to open. And keep in mind, PK Chris was the player that sent Tilde to losers way back in top 16. And you're going to have to make some magic happen, maybe not in this game, but certainly later games. But you can never underestimate Ness's damage output, especially when they land an up close PK fire like oh. that. Quick 44. But he didn't fully uh, hold his control stick in the direction that he was double jump canceling it. He uh, went a little bit too close. You have to make sure that you're fully leaning into it. You can't just do the diagonal buffered double jump cancel magnet. I know this is such niche information, but it's really but it's important, important to the drift and to other nest mates to get that optimal, delicious spacing. Yeah. Honestly, that's what keeps nest prevalent in the meta game, in the current meta game. Given how all, there's so many of these characters that can really deny interactions, when you get one, you gotta make it count. And PK oh. Chris, 44 is great, but it could have been so much more. And it, you're, that game is certainly so much more. And speaking of being able to take a hit and take it for a mile, Tilde finding a couple clean resets and turning that into a stock. This is the tragedy of being a floaty. This is the tragedy of also playing Ness. And the reason for this is because, okay, so you get hit with an up tilt. Right. The first immediate thought is, I'm going to just be able to air dodge out of this advantage. The issue is when you are a floaty, it takes a long time for you to be able to land. And Ness, typically speaking, doesn't want to use up his double jump at this advantage. He has definitely struggles to land, especially yes. against somebody like Falco, against somebody with such a potent up tilt. You can't trade on the way down. Let's say you press neutral and his back hit comes in a little bit before you, you just die. Yeah, and it's something you just have to hold. Pivoting into down tilt back air there on the platform, instantly changing up PK Chris. Not allowed to adapt to the situation yep. that got them the stock in game one. So they got to pivot into a different, uh, in different environment, looking for the that forward smash, potentially looking for an air dodge. Either way. Oh, but then tries to go for a bit of a cheeky down tilt. I'm not sure if he thought that that would set up into a tech chase. Uh, I believe against Falco, it should only be from about 38 onwards uh, that it would send him into tumble. But either way, he needs a way to be able to land. Florida is going to be the move of choice, but he's still not out of the coin. He is not out of the depths. The landing hitbox forcing to take a couple of those lasers. Going for the PK uh, the PK rocket get to get back to ledge, not trying to mess with any of these two frame timings. And I love how Tilde today has been implementing the usage yep. of neutral air. It's a insanely wide widespread move, intangible wings, and being able to go consistently air to air with majority of the cast. It may not get you the most damage, and it may not be the best combo starter at mid to high percent, but 
man, does it set up for great positions. He opted for the juggle instead of a foil throw, like a back throw, just in case Tilde had like opted for like a high recovery at that point in time. So Tilde just being so patient. He's not committing to anything. He gets that neutral lady, he doesn't get that neutral lady, but PK Chris going to be punished, opened up for the within that kind of a dash grab. So vulnerable. Oh, and the Phantasm back to stage. Oh, and Ooh. the frame that frame one reflect is there, but it's not enough in order to get back to uh, to get, escape the grab from PK Chris. The eye on uh, back field was a little bit questionable, and you see him going out. To, he tries to go through the deflect. He doesn't get it. He ends up getting clipped by that tail, but it's a okay because that ledge trap is still his. He's able to catch Chris jumping onto the platform unsafely. He's walking in, walking out. That's that kind of non-committal positional pressure Tilde is known for. Oh, and there's the down air on the jump and getting the forward air afterwards off of the missed tech. No double jump off stage, but just opts to go through that safe down tilt yet again. He doesn't want that spike yet. Another but forward air. Look at that. Wow, but missing another one of those two frames. They were able to get one in game one, but otherwise have been consistently missing those. There's some of those back, uh, low percent back throws, as you were talking about earlier, Dara, but this is a ton of damage in the stock, even that much rage. That nest forward smash doing all of the work and putting, uh, putting Chris into his first lead of the set. Let's see what he can do with this momentum here, Dara. Uh, the answer is continue to apply shield pressure. He tries to go for the fly magnet, but I don't believe on Falco you can do a fly magnet. You just need to do a hell double jump cancel magnet to actually combo it into the spike. It may or may not, but either way, Tilde catches that jump. He got that four leader. Can Chris make it back onto the stage? He doesn't fully commit to the bit. Wow. And even in the corner, being able to dash dance just a little bit like that, able to set up for another let's play. But at 146, the laser forces the PK rocket, and another missed two-frame attempt. At this point, I'm wondering why Tilde isn't going off stage, given how they're setting up for edge guard so well. But he has the double jump again. PK Chris went for another double jump cancel. PK fire. That should be the stock. Yes, it will be. That time again, Tilde has that confidence. He has that timing. He was able to punish it on reaction. 65%. I don't even have to say at this point. Falco can even this up in a second. Yeah, there, all it takes is one movie maker, and we can have ourselves a nice little cinema to get into the bat and get into and through this game. A big forward smash with there. Would have converted to so much more, but didn't account for the rage on that down throw, missing his for, uh, fair drag down. It's fairly difficult, it's fairly technical as is. I don't know if that up angled F tilt was intentional, or he wanted to make sure that he was getting a forward facing up tilt. Either way, he gets it that time. Drag down to Galoil. Remember what we said about damage? Falco can do it all, Tilde can do it all. Can you get this two frame here? Oh, hell, it's down on the PK rocket! And it almost gets a huge, oh, gets a huge trade, almost takes the stock because but of it. But the delayed angle is gonna be keeping Tilde alive a little bit longer. But you can't down and away DI is gonna keep you alive a little bit longer. It looks like it will kill only to sussy DI. Yeah, the, the instant phantasm to stage set up for a wow, the final hit of Dash Knight, and it closes out, reaching so far with that hitbox. Bursting out of the corner with an option that he had only committed to twice throughout that entire throughout the, the entire two games thus far, and Ness's raw hit kill power in scramble situations keeps them in this set. Yeah, this is what we like to call the Ness win. This is the Ness zone. You know what this is? This is called you are at a point with dash attack. My funny little multi-hit move that which is stupidly active. You want to know how many frames it is? I don't know. It's just active disjointed, capable of crossing up shields that you're probably not punishing if it hits your shield because you're too scared of all the other multi-hits. Ness mains will mash this move every <laughs> single chance they can get because when you hit it, you're like, ooh, that feels good. I like killing with this move. It feels funny. Yeah. One, so, of the, one of uh, the yeah. more recent additions to their kit after a, after a buff that maybe they didn't need, but they certainly got. Need it. <laughs> they need it. They need it. <laughs> So, all of a sudden, we're in game three here. Oh, no. Oh, no, indeed. <laughs> oh, no. Tilde taking so much knockback, back. He had no double jump. Typically, Falco can make up those heights thanks to his excellent double jump. Uh, but, yeah, he was all out of it. All out of stock, baby. And you don't got an air dodge like Ness's in order to traverse all of that distance. You got fast follower air dodge, which is much different, Woo! but a dare into dare. Instead of going into dare back air, which could have closed out the stock, trying to instead go for a low edge guard but or another two frame yet i feel like tilde has only maybe hit exactly one two frame here in this set thus far he gets there that down is. into the back here the one two baby 
Beautiful execution, just able to get that timing. And now 56%, talked about it before, all he needs is a way to be able to make it back onto the stage. Easy said than done. Yeah, just using a couple jumps, but the playing the, to the stage is PK Chris, able to intercept a couple tech-ins, and ju oh, just doing such a good job of approaching so quickly with shield, playing with that big neutral air, and letting Tilde really get concerned by the upcoming upscaling damage with every single one of these nares out of shield and nares <laughs> out of the corner. Dashing able to catch Very that nice. jump, finds that up. PK Chris finds himself at a confident 2-1 to one stock lead. But directional air dodge again, he just wants to make sure he touches the ground. He wants to make sure he has a double jump available to him. Waiting, good delayed vertical angle on that PK Thunder. Yeah, if there's anything that I've been seeing uh, PK Chris do extremely well, it's when they're recovering with PK Rocket, they do it in such a... Uh, like in, with so many timing mix-ups and so many different angles and bounces and... The flexibility that they have with that with, uh, with that form of recovery is really second to none right oh, now. Oh yeah. Okay, tries to go through that jump call out slightly, leans into it too much, not catching Tilde drifting down. Goes for the double jump, cancel PK fire. But uh, oh man, Tilde, he's trying to lock down this ledge trap somehow. He's waiting for Chris to press one bad button, but it is instead Tilde who presses that bad button. Oh, cheeky little wall jump in order to get by there, but you get hit by the PK Flash anyway. Finding the edge guard after getting that hit. Wow, what a commitment and what reward that you get off of that. Plot armor. <laughs> I don't know how that we got was, by uh, there. That was a little ugly of an interaction. We'll probably go back to that in just a little tiny bit, but the situation still stands. 114%. Tilde is not forcing this opening. He's being as patient, as gentle as he could be. And then he gets a dash grab. He gets that punish. And he's able to scout out that air dodge. He extends, but then... Ness. He extends. He extends into that hitbox. He extends with the up air, uh, with the up tilt, which some of those, uh, some of the hitboxes are a little bit in, uh, disjointed. The wings may be intangible, but the arm is not. And getting intercepted with that. Yeah. So, funny little thing about Ness. But yeah, funny thing about Mac, everybody's like, oh, is that just an active hitbox all the way down? No. It's not. It uh, flickers. It's like basically the equivalent of taking a flashlight over and over and just like, who is flickering the lights? <laughs> right? Nosferatu. But uh, he comes back out with that PK flash, and uh, oh man, that is that is just such a funny little stage fight. He didn't <laughs> get to spike it, he was still able to get that. Um, I'm not even sure if that was like untackable at that, at that point, Did but. Um, one of the beauties that Ness really brings to the table is that any of his buttons can kill. He does not struggle to kill. I think Ness is not a fantastic character, but his back end kills, his neutral end, his up end, his forward end, down end, everything, dash attack, F tilt, up tilt, that's back what throw, makes him, up throw. <laughs> that's what makes him such an amazing tournament character. Because even in like these on-paper situations where you have, uh, it's like, okay, this is always going to work to edge guard Ness. This is always going to beat out his hitboxes. Yeah, but it's hard to orchestrate those on-paper situations in a real whole match. How do you orchestrate a saxophone player who keeps going on a damn solo parenthesis <laughs> mashing? So now Chris makes it back onto the ledge. He's at 114% deficit. <laughs> oh, the Twitter blade out has spread to the way that I speak. Oh, uh, terminally oh, online, here we come. But Tilde finding a big poke trying to shut yeah. down this saxophone player and get him back on the drums. Oh, tries to go play that down tilt, oh, down smash, excuse me, too thin. But Tilde just always keeps his double jump. He always makes sure to recover high. You never want to go to the ledge against Ness. He makes sure that that yo-yo is a non-issue. As that's honestly like something you really need to shut down, especially as a spacey player. You want to have access to things like Phantasm, back to stage, back to ledge, and PK Chris has been a Tilde's been doing a pretty good job of making PK oh. Chris edge guard in different ways, but can Tilde and unable to complete the edge guard there? But this ledge trap is going on for maybe like, maybe basically since the game started, it feels like. And that is uh, sometimes a bit of a struggle for you now. Chris neutral get up and he's not rushing the situation. He's just being really, really patient. Tilde though, he was looking for that double jump cancel PK fire, but maybe was thinking about it a little bit too hard because he still ended up getting hit by it. Back throw is going to be able to kill. Yeah, closing out the stock from center stage like that. Gets the Phantasm into Dare. Oh, yeah. No, uh, not going for the edge guard yet again. Just too deep in order to ride the stage like that. Instead, looking for another two frame. That drops. It, whoa. That crazy. magnet up in was a little bit fake. That magnet up was a little bit fake because he didn't actually get like the back hit that which he needed. Uh, but that is A-OK -okay kill date. Keeping it competitive. Keeping it advantageous. But he didn't get the full drag down. Chris was a little bit too above the ground. And so he was able to directional air dodge back to the stage. 
getting through just fine. And there's another one of those rising neutral airs. Air dodge, showing off that American air dodge. Get hit by the big neutral air, set, resetting the situation. Even if they weren't able to take the stock because of it, they still managed to close out and get a little bit more damage. And the one time Chris goes through that PK file coverage for the tech roll out and in place, that's when Tilde went to tech roll in. Up smash, good DI, down and away. You can live it a little bit longer than you think you can. But uh, that up is especially all the way up there. Wow, this good is, stuff. This is scary, Dara. Any little hit, Ness can equally do a ton of damage, but getting a little bit greedy coming off of ledge like that, that double jump can, or that jump from ledge magnet is such a tantalizing option as a Ness player to find those big reversals and do a chain from one side of the stage to the other but Tilde meets him with a giant back air in for their troubles. I love the fact that you pointed this out as a tantalizing option. It is. When you hit double jump cancel uh, magnet neutrally from the ledge as Ness, you're like, ooh, that was the oh, best 40% nice, right? of my whole <laughs> life, man. The thing that I was looking for this whole time that felt good to hit. But alas, double jump cancel, as its name implies, uh, it requires a double jump beforehand. It takes quite a bit of time for you to actually have any sort of active hitbox. Tilde was just able to get in there. He was able to get in there after, I think, the first flicker of the magnet. Yeah. Uh, it is a huge, huge commitment. Second? Right. The flicker comes in every three frames. Uh, yes. Yeah, so it comes yeah. on frame seven, and then it's active for a little bit, and then disappears. Still, uh, game five, part two, uh, number two. We got another one. We got another one. <laughs> top, top four is, is kind of wilder right now. And I'm not complaining. These are some nice sets. This yeah. is this is some lovely yeah. stuff. Still, one of these, both these players got to get through the other, and he's starting off early with some of the nest shenanigans, trying to read an air dodge, and maybe so much more with that PK rocket. But it doesn't come down in turn, and now we get to see oh, how yeah. Tilde opens up that court. And finding a couple resets with these what platforms. What a drag down as Ooh. well, able to get that extension, gets that back here. So now Chris has no double jump off stage. How does he make it back on? He just goes for regular PK Thunder. What a scout. That it is that it. positional pressure. You just jump after him. You wait for that air dodge, and you get those down tilt two clips. <laughs> you, you did it. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> And it's, I mean, what a time in order to get it. You find that, uh, find a big opening here in game five, three stocks to two. You're allowed to play with the lead, play with that advantage, and play with a sense of security whenever you decide to dash back. But Tilde ain't dashing back here. He is pressing that advantage. Yeah, Chris makes it back onto the legend. He's no longer so patient. He double jumped. He double jumped. He went for the double jump cancel. PK fire. He buffered an air dodge. And good old multi hit. Well, ultimate, excuse me. And buffering air dodges out of multi hits. It happens to the best of us. And I've been, I've been seeing more and more players implement multi hit and uh, it's ultimate engine advantages. If you're expecting to tech people buffering that air dodge and you just let the multi hit drop, you let the drag down complete on stage while your opponent's off stage. Situations. It could have been, maybe. <laughs> At the end of the day, an SD is an SD. You have a huge deficit to be able to come back to them. The question is, will Chris be able to do this? Okay, vibe check. Do you jump? Oh my god. Ah. Oh. We'll Dar talk about that. Dar is upset. <laughs> As a Ness fan watching that, guys, just wait out those multi hits, angle your shield down, and jump away to safety. But uh, right now, Chris can't land to safety. Now, there is just so much that they have to work for. Getting that jump from ledge, landing safely, but Tilde's threatening with so many of these back airs. The forward air intercepting on that uh, on that timing mix up. But can they uh, can they make their way through? Oh, a little bit of a scramble, but the forward tilt comes out amidst BK Chris only landing one of those down tilts. And at 140. Oh my gosh. And that's all that it takes. You don't even need to reflect it. You don't need anything. You just need to shove Ness down a little bit more. Ness lives and dies by his double jump. Chris died by that lack of double jump quite a few times. Tilde is going to be moving on to losing his finals in a confident fashion. All of that set was so close, but that game five when he needed it most, that was domination. Yeah, and it only sent him down like pixels, like very, very small amount, but it was just enough in order to not yeah. get the bounce and not get the means to recover. Beautiful stuff. So I'm actually curious, was that actually a two frame or is that just because of Ness's bounce? I, oh, it was because of the bounce. Uh, as we can get uh, it. No, 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 that's, a, that's, the, uh, that's Ness in his two frame animation. I'm oh, fairly okay. confident. So right, he see. collides with the stage. Um, he's bouncing off of it. He's doing his funny little bounce thingy. And, and then, yeah, he's grabbing there, yeah. Is you he? Can, well, you, is his you, face you can, just planted you can see into the, the stage. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the, okay. the grab. Let me get the, the blue in. Let's let's zoom in there. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, Where's, <laughs> look there. He's grabbing. Look at his hand. His hand's outreaching. Okay. Like, he's trying. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. 
Um, but also, like, Ness does give, like, an opening for, like, an extra pseudo to him uh, when he does bounce as well, because that time after which he bounces is also super vulnerable, and it's for usually sure. quite close to the ledge before his two-frame animation. Okay, let's talk about this. What happened? What could have Tilly done? Guys, super classic Ness stuff. It is time for us to learn. It is time for us to learn the counterplay of what you can actually do here. So, Ness is up smash. The hitbox, without accounting for hit lag and for shield, uh, for shield lag, is active for 1.5 seconds, just about, yeah? So he's charging it, he's charging Four, it, and then you just gotta six, wait for seven, all of those multi-hits to uh, successfully disappear. You have to make sure that you're constantly angling your shield down. You don't want to go before the multi-hits disappear, because then right. it'll stuff out the startup of your goal animation. You don't want to jump before the multi-hits finish, because it'll get you before you know, your jump animation fully completes. So wait out the multi-hits, 1.5 seconds, plus a little bit of hit lag, plus a little bit of shield lag, and then you can roll away, you can jump away. Uh, sometimes if you have like a really fast upbeat, like Game & Watch, right. uh, that would be also a pretty good time to pop I, it. I think uh, Tony might have also been counting for the hits of shield, because if your shield gets hit, uh, I believe the number is 11 times, then your roll with frame one and vulnerability. Uh, but I don't it think it hits your shield 11 times. Uh, yeah, it only hit 10, yeah. is the thing, so. You know, that's kind of, the, you're, you're missing that one key number, and without yep. that, you lose that invulnerability, which means you cannot roll, so you're better off just waiting out the full timing. Yeah, but...